and I also uh, want to minister to some of you guys, lay hands and, you know, go as the Lord leads. Amen. So I have to work with my time. The choir stole like 20 minutes of my time. <laughs> I've forgiven you. Amen. 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 All right, so uh, can you give me the audio tonight to remind me that I have something else to do? All right. So, come on, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, see, brother, my Hosha. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And that's the angel. Wow. Amen. So, thank you. Amen. How many of you are excited about 2018? Amen. Yeah, 2018 on me. There's still a lot that the Lord can do in just a few moments. Amen. I'm excited about this year. I'm excited about the upcoming one. Amen. Uh, I, I really enjoyed 2018. I mean, it's been a marvelous year. Uh, it's been an amazing year. Uh, I've learned so much and... Uh, you know, I I I have evolved in my personhood and you know, in, uh, in not only my spirit that as well, but uh, more in the realm of my uh, you know uh, my my soul. You know, uh, my my will has evolved, has changed. The way I see things have changed. And one of the things that the Lord really uh, it's not just in 2018, but uh, you know, it's kind of like He just you know put the period at the end of it. Is, is to, you know, take fear completely, you know, out of my system, you know, because sometimes what I, I realize that one of the greatest hindrances to the things that I could easily do was fear of how people were going to react, whether people are going to like it or not, whether people are going to be pleased or not. But when you don't care, you just don't care. You understand? You just do what you ought to do. And that is one of the things that the Lord crushed in me, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And one of the hindrances, the main hindrances is to walk in power, love, and sound mind and fear. Amen. So that is just, I'm just grateful to God, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the things that probably would have had me down, you know, mentally or that maybe psychologically perturbed in, you know, I cannot reason or uh, uh, those things don't weigh me down anymore. And it's, it's because of the, this stage of change that the Lord had to take me through. And, and, you know, one of the things that I'm also grateful to God for is that you know God? God? God showed me things for what they really were, and uh, uh, it's it's kind of like you know He puts an urge to my discernment, and and sometimes you know when, when the Lord shows you stuff or uh, you discern stuff in the spirit, um, sometimes it, it is one thing to discern something, and it's also another thing to take an action based off your discernment, and uh, one of the things that the Lord uh, uh, gave me the, the courage to do was to make wise decisions because. Uh, you have to respond. You are, you are you are the custodian of your soul. See, God has given you gifts. God has given you abilities and all of them. But you have to steward what God has given you. When God gives you something, He's not going to steward what He has given you. And you need to be uh, disciplined and strong enough to say yes to the right things and say no to the wrong things. Amen. Amen. And so uh, it, it's been a great year for me, to be honest with you. It's been. I will honestly tell you that 2018 has been the best year of my life. And it. it, it there are a lot of things that have happened. See, it's not in the realm of maybe the, like the material itself. There are a lot of things that I've enjoyed in the past. Like I've, I've not really had much besides you know certain things that have happened that I've really you know had a good life. Uh, but 2018 has been amazing because of the internal working of God's spirit in on the inside. You know the fulfillment that you have on the inside. There is nothing like that. Amen. And I'm really grateful to God for that. So uh, we're just gonna go into uh, the Word of God for a few minutes probably. Uh, and then, and then you take it from there. Amen. One of the things that the, 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 the Lord ministered to me concerning the upcoming year was, you know, the Lord said to me, "The son is going to be the year of crazy," and uh, He said, you know, that that he's, he's getting ready to push us to the realm where we begin to see the unusual happenings of God, the crazy stuff, you know. The things that we see in the Bible, the book of Acts, the Spirit of God, he's positioning us 
uh, in, in a place and in a way that we can see a great manifestations of the yellow side of God. Come on, tell someone the yellow side of God. Yes. God, God is, you know, God is a multifaceted God. You know, He has so many dimensions to Him. He is limitless, and there is no end to God. There is no end to His being. He's eternal. He's limitless. He's immutable. And so, uh, 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 there, there are a lot of sights about God. And uh, uh, God, God just the Lord said to me that we're going to see some side of Him. And, you know, I was just seeking the face of God and I was like, you know, what, what are some of the things that, you know, can hinder us from walking into this place that you designed for us, you know, because it's one thing to have a promise and it's another thing to see the fulfillment of it. You know, I tell you all the time, if there is a married couple and God says to them, you know, next year, 2019, you're going to have a child, you know, and, and God has given a promise, but the man and his wife have the responsibility to get busy. You know, they also, God is going to do his part, but they also have a responsibility to do what they need to do. For, for you understand to meet the, the, the promise of God and uh, uh, so I, I was praying to God, God you have these things designed that if we don't do what we ought to do we're going to miss the promise of God. Uh, Jesus said to Jerusalem that you know how I long to gather you as, as, as a hen gathers her chicks but you guys have missed the time of your visitation. So Jesus there was a visitation for the people in Jerusalem but they missed their hour of visitation. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's possible to miss your hour of visitation. The thing that you want has been released, but you're going to miss it because you didn't take notice and you weren't able to discern the hour of your visitation. One of the things that the Lord does is that He places things and people and, and things that are, are a requirement to your destiny. God places them in specific places, in specific times. And sometimes you can miss out on it, not because God didn't provide, but because you missed the hour of your visitation. You understand? That's why every time you get the opportunity to come into the presence of the Lord, you take advantage of that because you don't know when it is going to be. Amen. There are multiple, there are, the, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that the one who looks at the wind is not going to, it's not going to sow. The one who looks at the weather is not going to sow. You're like, ah, the weather is not good for this. But he said, you take a step of faith and you go to the next level. Amen. So, so it's very important, and I was asking the Lord, what, what is some of the things that can be a hindrance to this amazing season that you have for us, that you plan for us? And the Spirit of God said to me that, that, that one of the things that is going to be the greatest hindrance to the move of God in our lives is disobedience. And, and you know, I tell you guys all the time, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Amen. So when God gives you an instruction, your response should be, Yes, Lord. When God gives you an instruction, your response should be, Yes, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. Like Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So when God speaks, your, your reaction should be, yes, Lord, because God is looking for people who are led to the, to the things of the Spirit and very sensitive to the movements of God's Spirit. Because the, the Word of God declares in John chapter 3 that the one who is born of the Spirit is like the wind. And a normal person, a carnal person, cannot tell the ways of that man because he's like a wind. And you cannot tell where he's going and where he's coming. You just feel the move of it. And so are people who are born of God. They move like the wind. You, you cannot figure them out because God is not a God of formula. God breaks every box. If you if you establish a formula that God's going to operate within it, that is it. So most of the time you see the scriptures that God does something one way, but he never repeats that stage anymore. You understand that? He heals someone, he lays hands on him, the, the next person he spits in his eye. You understand? So he has a lot of ways that God is a very creative God. Look at the universe. Look at human beings. Look at different colors and different heights and different things about because he's a very creative God and God is very creative in his, his approach to the things that we do. Amen. And, and, and the Lord said to me, one of the things that will hinder us is disobedience. And we have to be quick to obey. We have to be quick to listen. And we need to be sensitive to what the Spirit of God is saying. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. So God is always speaking. So the question is not, is God speaking or is, are you listening? Because God is always speaking. He never stops speak, speaking. Amen. So you have to position yourself in a way that you can receive the frequency of the Spirit. You can receive what God is saying. And, and but one of the things that is going to be a hindrance is destruction. And, and the major thing is going to be disobedience. It's going to stand in your path. It's going to block what God is saying. And you need to get rid of every form of destruction. When God speaks, it doesn't matter whether you understand it or not. Your response to God should be, yes, Lord. Samuel didn't know what God was going to say. But Ellis said, listen, when he speaks to you, say, yes, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So when God speaks to you, your response should be, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And a lot of times, the Lord places emphasis on things. And, and you know, sometimes we have the, uh, uh, the, the proclivity as human beings to be disobedient sometimes. You know, and God, uh, 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 
uh, Pharaoh had a dream. And in the dream, you know, he saw the, the lean cows that came out of the river and ate the big cows, right? And then he also saw that the, the little, the, the, the thin stalks of grains and, you know, plants that ate the, the big ones. And it was a crazy dream. So they called for Joseph to come and Joseph interpreted the dream. And Joseph said, okay, that it is one and the same dream. The one about the cows and the one about the corn plant is the same dream. But the reason why that the Lord gave it to you twice is because it has been firmly established and it's going to be so. And there are a lot of you here, the Lord, that, so the reason why, that is why you, you need to understand certain principles. When God does something twice, it's because it is eminent and, and there is emphasis on it. So it's, it is it's the same thing that he gave to you twice because it has been firmly established. So that is why when Jesus is speaking, he says, verily, verily, I see what you mean and pay attention. This is really important. God calls Samuel. He doesn't respond. Uh, he goes to see Ellie. He calls me again, Samuel. He doesn't respond. The third time, God says, Samuel, Samuel. And then he responds, speak, law for your servant to listen. Paul is on his way to the master. He says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So God is very keen and very, he's very interested in you listening to what he has to say. Because God says, pray without season. And prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. It's a conversation between two people. So if God wants to, you to talk to him without season, evidently, he wants to also talk to you without season. And God is in the business of talking. God likes to talk all the time. You just have to uh, 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 find time and spend time in the secret place with God. And that is where he'll talk to you. The place between the messy seat and the cherubim, that place is where God is going to talk to you. And, and when the, the curtain was torn from the bottom to the top, it was open and you have access to the throne room of God. Therefore, come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. So we need to get rid of every destruction. And, and, and destruction is a very, uh, uh, disobedience is a very powerful tool that the enemy uses against the children of God. When he came in the Garden of Eden, did God really say you shall not eat of the tree, you know, of the knowledge of good and evil? You see how beautiful this thing is? Look, what they disobeyed the order that God gave and it brought a series of cataclysmic events into motion. And this is the result of it, except but for the grace of God. Amen. But for the grace of God, we are what we are. It's in Him that will live and move and have our very being. So everything that we are and what we are is as a result of God's grace. Um, you understand that? By grace, if you said chapter 3, said, by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of words, lest any man should be both, should boast of. Isaiah said that on, the, on your best days, all your good deeds are like filled the rocks. Amen. So it is the grace of God that the Bible says, words sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. So you and I are what we are by the grace of God, not because of how good we are, how smart we are, how good we look. None of that. It is the grace of God that has sustained you and brought you this far. So, uh, uh, we need to get rid of disobedience because that is the, it's one of the primary weapons that the enemy is going to try to use. And you have to be careful and be attentive to what God is saying in this season. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 says that the seeing eye and the hearing ear, the Lord has made them both. Uh, so if you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, listen, he's the one who created the eye and the one who created the ears. Tell him to give you sensitivity to the Spirit because one of the things that you need in this season is discernment. You need to be able to discern the times and seasons and know what you ought to do. Because if you are not able to discern the times and seasons, you're going to be easily bamboozled. And you can be blown to and fro by every wind that comes your way. You're going to be unstable in all your ways. So you need to be, be discerning in this season and be very sensitive to the move of God and the movements of God's Spirit in this season. And one of the things you need to pray to God for in this season is that God give me discernment. God, I need to be able to discern because there's a whole lot of things going on, a whole lot of good stuff and bad stuff, and you need to be able to tell what is what. You, you need to be able to know what, what is God and what is not. Because the word of God declares that even the enemy, the devil, masquerades himself as an angel of life. Amen. And you need to be able to tell. You can see something that looks like an angel of life, and you're like, ah, 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 ah. This is not an angel of life. This is the devil. People are going to think you're crazy. Who do you think you are? All of that. But because you have the spirit of God. See, the carnal mind cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually deserving. The people who are carnal minds, they cannot discern what God is doing. But when you align yourself with God, you can discern what the enemy. See, what, see deception wouldn't, wouldn't be deception if it were obvious. So the reason why deception, for deception to be successful, it has, you have to be oblivious to the fact that it is deception. So what the enemy does, that if he brings a lie to you, you are going to know, oh, this is Satan. So what he does is he mixes the lie with the truth. And the half-truth is a whole lie. Because you need the whole thing. Amen. Amen. So 
We, we need to position ourselves in this season to be obedient to what God is saying in this season. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, that if you are obedient to what the Spirit of God is saying and doing in this season, and, and again, positioning yourself for what God is getting ready to do, if you are obedient and you will listen to the voice of the Spirit, you will listen to the cry of the Spirit, because many of us in here believe us, Top speaking, we find ourselves doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And the Spirit of God comes and picks you when you don't repent of it. And you are clearly and slowly being given over to a reprobate mind. You need to repent and get yourself together. And you need to be attentive. It, it is a dangerous place for you to be as a believer when you get to a place and you are not sensitive to the movements of the Spirit anymore. Not only are you not even able to discern what is going on, you've even lost sensitivity that you sin and you don't feel bad about it. And it's a dangerous place and it's a terrible place and you need to be sensitive and you need to cry out to God. Listen, if you are in this room and some of you are, and if you are in this room like that, there is grace that is available for you. But you need to cry out to God, God, I need this conviction back. I need sensitivity back. I, I need to be renewed. I need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Because it's a very dangerous place to be. It's in a place that the enemy can get you. Not just by disobedience, but every wind he blows is going to get you because you belong to him. Jesus said that the prince of this world is coming, the devil is coming, but he has nothing in me. He has no hold in me. So Jesus is able to walk about as, a, as not even as one of the Pharisees, but as an authoritarian, as a man of authority, as a man of power, because the enemy has nothing in him. And if the enemy has got something in you, he's going to move you any way that he wants. He's going to take you wherever he wants. And you need to be careful as a believer that your mind doesn't become seared as with a hot iron. When the Spirit of God convicts you and you're disobedient, God is telling you, be very careful what you do. You keep on moving. The Spirit of God keeps on convicting you. Watch where you're going. Watch what you're saying. And you don't pay the Spirit of God any mind. You don't pay him. You keep on doing what you are doing. Hey, be very careful the people you hang around. What are you doing here? You probably forgot the advice that the other person gave you, and you keep on ignoring that, and you keep on ignoring the Spirit of God. And it's a very dangerous thing to do, and it's a very dangerous place to be. And if you have found yourself in such a place, in such a situation, where you've been disobedient to the call and, and, and the cry of the Spirit, because I was seeking the Spirit of God, and I heard, I heard the cry of the Spirit. And, and I was like, God, what is going on? And it was the cry of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is crying for the people that He loves. He's, crying for the people that he longs for because they've been disobedient and, and they've been moving in ways that is contrary to, to sound doctrine. They've been moving in ways that is disobedient. Uh, it's not in alignment. It's not on the paradigm that God has set up. It's not moving in the same direction. And not just angels are not even crying. The angels are silent by the Spirit of God. The, the angels are dumbfounded by the way people that the blood of Christ has bought them. When Christ died on Calvary, all heaven was silenced because the Son of God, God in the flesh, was crucified, the creator of the heavens and earth. By him all things exist and all things consist. God died in the flesh to save your soul. And angels were silent. They couldn't move. They were not, they were not active. They couldn't do anything. And there was weeping and mourning in heaven because the Son of God had died. And now, he has, because he died for you, all this happened. Everything, heaven went bankrupt just to get you. And Hebrews said, when you disobey, now what you're doing is that you are trampling the Son of Man over your feet and you are exposing him to public disgrace all over again. And the Spirit of God, things are happening like that. And the Spirit of God is crying in the Spirit. Because when you became a believer, God has saved your heart with His Spirit. And the Spirit of God is crying because of the path that a lot of people are taking. A lot of people are disobedient to the movement of the Spirit. They keep on doing the same old things. And it's not even a struggle. They have no intention to change. They have no desire to be transformed. They have no desire to be renewed. No fellowship with God. No prayer. No study of the Word. You don't come to church. And you say, my spirituality is not about church. Who told you that? Evidently, you don't read your Bible. The Bible says that do not forget. Do not avoid the gathering of the saints. As is the habit of some. If you are a person who loves God and who is in tune with God, you cannot wait to be in the presence of God. You cannot wait to be in the presence of your maker. And you, you need to get yourself together. I, I'm really speaking to some of you in here. And I, I'm really passionate about it because it's a truth. And it's going to save your soul. And we cannot sugarcoat this. A lot of people can sugarcoat this for you. But I have a responsibility to discharge you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. For the word of God declares in Timothy that a time is coming where people are not going to endure sound doctrine, but they're going to gather around themselves, teachers having each and ears who tell them what they want to hear. But I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what God wants you to hear so that it's going to save your soul. God has a plan for you. God has a destiny for you. 
God has a lot of things in store for you, but you need to align yourself and be obedient to what the Spirit of God is saying. Make sure that you do not resist Him who speak. The Word of God is that the Israelites, when they were coming from Egypt, they were destroyed in the desert because they, they didn't obey the angel. And so even if they didn't, if they didn't go to the promised land, Take note that there is a promise involved, but they didn't get to the destination because they were disobedient to the angel. And so, back then, even people said, back then, even if they didn't get there because they resisted, how much more we in the new covenant, we, if we resist Him who speaks, we resist the Spirit of God. The Spirit of grace is that when sin abounds, He makes grace abound all the more. He's there for you every time, and you keep on resisting Him. The Word of God says, You cannot be an enemy of God. And brothers and sisters, you need to get it right. You need to get your relationship with God right. And today, glory to God, we're going to pray, break some stuff off of you. Amen. If you're struggling with something, we're going to lay hands on you. The power of God is going to hit you in your soul and your spirit. Amen. Amen. So you need to make sure that you're obedient to the things of God. Let's go to um, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Are you there? <clears throat> Isaiah 1 19. It says, If you will be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. This is God's promise to you in this season. That if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. There is a land that God has prepared for you. And there's a lot of good stuff in there. There is a blessing in there. And God said, the only thing that you have to do, see the promise that God has made for you is in the land. The promised land is already there. And God says, all you have to do is be willing and obedient. And if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Next verse. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The word of God says in Revelation that out of his mouth came a double-edged sword. And God is saying, look, I've got a promise for you. And he, but all you have to do is be willing and obedient. And a lot of time we pray, God, may I eat the good of the land? And God says, not about you praying and telling me you want to eat the good of the land. It's about you being willing and obedient. And if you are willing and obedient, everything that God has planned for you is going to come to pass. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word does it, so shall my word be that proceed out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the task for which I send it. If God speaks, it's going to accomplish it. And anything that stands in the way of the Spirit of God is going to clear the earth out of the way. So God, see the promise that God has made to you is, is to bless you, but not just for you, but it's for a whole generation of people. See, as you see that as an individual, there is a whole generation of people that is on the inside of you. Because the keys that is going to unlock the power and the blessings to a whole generation is on the inside of you. And if you fail, a whole generation is going to miss out. And God is going to put someone there, so God is going to get you out of the way. Because it's not all about you, it's about what brings glory to God. So God says, look, I've got a whole bunch of stuff for you. I've got a lot of good stuff for you. But if you are willing and obedient, you will get to the place which is flowing with milk and honey. But if you refuse and rebel, so you will have the choice. He says, if you are willing and obedient, God is not going to wrestle with you. His spirit is not going to contend with man. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. There's a whole lot of good stuff in there. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured. A lot of time we like to quote the first part, but we don't come to the second part. And it's important that we know. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11 to 19. Bless you, Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11 to 19. Are you there? Are you there? So God is speaking and says, Now, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. So we are going all the way to 19. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. So what I'm commanding you is not too difficult and it's not out of your reach. Verse 12. It is not up in heaven so that you may, so that you have to ask. 
who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to go and ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey. No, the word of the Lord is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey. So God said, the instruction I'm going to give to you is God in heaven. You'll be like, God, you know, I would have obeyed if I was way up in heaven. And God, God knows all your tricks. And God is like, no, it's not in heaven that you're going to say, who is going to go up there and get it for me? And it's not across the sea. But it's in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey. Because the law of the Spirit has been written in your heart. Verse 15. See, I said before you, now this is very important. Verse 15. See, I said before you today, life and prosperity. Life and prosperity, death and destruction. And a lot of people believe prosperity is from the devil. Thank you. A lot of people believe prosperity is from the devil, right? When they see a believer prospering, he's backslided. <laughs> now you're a Christian and you have all that money. And the Bible said God was blessing Abraham with, you know, gold and cattle and silver and all of that. Amen. Amen. You see it in the Bible, you praise God for it. You see it in your brother's life, you get jealous. You need to repent too. <laughs> so he says, see, verse 15. See, I said before you today, life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him. And to keep his commands, decrees, and laws that you will live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing, in, in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as a witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Amen. So God says in Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and you rebel, you're going to be devoured by the sword. And now he comes in the chapter of the 30 and he's telling you, look, I'm setting before you life and prosperity. I'm setting before you life and prosperity. But there's also death and destruction. But I am telling you, I'm giving you the good to choose life that you will lead. And then you will enter the promised land. And you see, God has made all these things available in this upcoming season. But you have the responsibility to be obedient to what the Spirit of God is saying. God said, look, God said, I have set it before you. There is life before you, and there is death and destruction before you. Life and prosperity. But I'm giving you the power of choice. And I, because I love you, I want you to make the right choice. I'm telling you that you can go astray. But you're going to live with the consequence of your action. So God is beckoning on us the choose life. God is admonishing you. And he said, look, it's not too difficult. It's not in the heavens and it's not across the sea. It's right here. Fix your eyes on Jesus and obey what God is saying. And God says that if you obey his instruction, you're going to eat the good of the land. Look, there are a lot of things that God has planned for you. The Lord said that his plan towards you are not evil, not meant to destroy you, but to keep you a prosperous end. Everyone in here, there's an assignment in your life. I don't care what you've done in the past, who you were in the past, or, uh, uh, what, what you experienced. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, the new creation, the old has passed away, the whole all things have become new. Amen. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself. Amen. Amen. So each and every one here, there is greatness in you, there is potential in you. But it is your obedience to God that is going to unlock that ground. So it is your obedience, the key to the next dimension, the season that is ahead of us, the key that is going to unlock everything, the life and prosperity in that realm, the blessings, the promises, everything in that realm, the key that is going to unlock it is obedience. All you have to do is be obedient in this season. All you have to do is be obedient in this season. And God is going to prosper you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and it added no sorrow to it. Now, the blessing, let's see if it does in the Bible. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It says, The blessings of the Lord makes rich and it adds no pain to it. So, watch this. Watch this. 
we, we found out in the trilogy of authority that the blessings is connected to the promised land, the land that you're supposed to possess. So the land itself is a blessing, but there are more stuff in the land which are also blessings. Okay? And the key to getting the... And God said that, that, that uh, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and it added no sorrow to it. So we are talking about blessings. And it says that when you get to the land of blessing, in the place of blessing, there is no sorrow. God is going to prosper you in all your ways. God is going to bless you in all your ways. And there is going to be no pain or toil associated with it. I love this verse. I, I think I have to get it and paste it in my room all everywhere. Just meditate on the blessings of the Lord. Make it rich. And it added no sorrow to it. Amen. 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 Religious people can't accept that. Just want to be poor for Jesus, okay? <laughs> if, if that's your calling, no condemnation. I mean, everyone has got their calling from God. I don't believe that's right. <laughs> amen. Everyone, is, yes, amen. Oh, Jesus was really broke. Jesus had a treasurer. Judas used to keep the money. The fact that you have another, an extra person whose responsibility is just to keep money. And the Bible said that he used, Jesus used to steal from it and he thought they wouldn't recognize it. How much, like, if I give you 20 quire, and you take one quire, I'll know. <laughs> like, all you, all you did was take one quire, I'll know that, ah, something has happened to this money. But if it's a whole bunch of money, I want to recognize it. And the Bible Jesus used to steal from the coffers of Jesus. You understand? He used to steal, and he thought they wouldn't recognize it. But Jesus knew all along, and Jesus said nothing to him. Amen. So how many broken people you know who have treasuries? People who walk alongside them, who keep their money for them. It's in your Bible. You understand that? See, in order to advance, we need the blessings of the Lord to make progress. See, I said the other time, sometimes a lot of people are like, sometimes it's a bit selfish, you know. You know, you, you just, you just, it's what you think about yourself. But when you see other people in need, other people in district need, you, 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 the, the, the passion of God, the Bible says, Jesus was moved with compassion. And he fed the multitude. He was moved with compassion and he healed their sin. Everyone who is compassionate would want the blessings of God in their life. Not just because they want to satisfy their needs, but it needs to be an overflow to people who cannot help themselves. The Bible admonishes us to take care of the poor. How can you take care of the poor if you are the poor? How are you going to do that? If you want to sit there and other people will come and take care of you, okay. But, but see, if, 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 the, if the fire of God is burning on the inside of you, and you see people in need, you see people who are desperate, people who have nothing, and you have nothing, you wish, how I wish there was an overflow that I could be a blessing to these people. So it's no longer about you satisfying your personal needs, but you want to be a blessing to people. And when you are passionate for stuff like that, God knows that you can, you can be a responsible steward of his blessings. Amen. So the blessings of the Lord, it make us rich. And it added no sorrow to it. Amen. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Just going as quickly as possible because we have other things to do tonight. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 15. I'm just talking to you about obedience. And afterwards, I'm going to go through a series of stories, you know, about three or four stories in the Bible. That there were actions of obedience, and we're going to see the result of the obedience. Amen. So, first of all, chapter 15. Are you there? We're going to read from 12 to 22. So, this is a story about the Israelites who are going to war with the Amalekites. Okay? And the Amalekites are very wicked people. I mean, they're crazy people. They are, they are evil people. I mean, they're evil to the core. And they are going to battle against them, and God says to Israel, I've given you victory over the Amalekites. Now you go and you destroy them, wipe all of them out. And as a matter of fact, I want you to wipe them out so much that when you go, even their animals kill it. Kill the cows, kill the goats, kill the monkeys, everything. Kill all of them. Don't even spare their king. Kill every one of them. Destroy them. Because these were evil people. And this is what it ensues from there. So first I want to 15 verse 12 to 22. So, early in the morning, so Saul has gone to the battle 
and he's come back from the battle. And it was the word, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Samuel and said, Samuel said, hey, the Lord has given you victory. Go and conquer these people and wipe them all out. All the animals, the goats, the cows, everything. Every one of them. Wipe them out. And everything that belongs to them. So they've come back from the battle. And the prophet Samuel who came and gave them the instruction is coming back to meet Saul and the people. Verse 12. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was, he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. So God has given him victory in a battle and he comes back and builds a statue of himself. So the prophet says, wait for me here. But, you know, like, I've, I've gained the victory, so you know, I have to build my statue. You know, that's what we all do, right? When we gain victory, we build statues of ourselves. You cannot wait for the prophet to come back. So, he goes to build a statue of himself, verse 13. So the prophet goes to Mount Carmel. So, so when Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. So the instruction is, wipe them out, take away their livestock and everything that blows them. Destroy them, utterly destroy them. So the prophet is coming to meet Saul. And Saul, immediately Saul sees him, he gets spiritual. Oh, the Lord bless you. You know, when people are disobedient and sometimes they see even the leaders of the church, oh, praise the Lord. Glory <laughs> to God. Uh, did you wipe off all the Amalekites? Right to be extra spiritual. So he says, he says to Samuel, this is, how we, this is how we greet Samuel. The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instruction. But Samuel said, what then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is, the, is this lowing of cattle that I hear? So now, so Samuel wasn't hearing it in the natural. He was speaking prophetically. So he comes to him and Samuel said that, uh, Saul said, I've done all that the Lord re uh, required of me. And Samuel said, hold up. Why do I hear the bleating of sheep in my ear? Why do I hear the moving of cows? Why do I hear all of that? And this is his reply. But someone said, what then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is the load of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, someone said to, Sam, someone said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied, Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission, saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of God? And this is his reply. He told him to repent. The prophet caught him. He thought the prophet couldn't see. So he said, he, he looked at the cattle of the prophet like, look, I hear it in the spirit. I hear the bleat of cow. I hear the lowing of cattle. He's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. No, you didn't forget. It got caught. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. The guys, you know, I was coming with the guys, and the guys wiped out everything, but they saw some good stuff, and actually they wanted to offer it as a sacrifice to God. So they brought it. And just, not just God, but your God. You understand? The God that we said. And Samuel said, this is what the Lord said to me last night. You were once small in your own eyes. Now you've become proud. You were in the least tribe. I brought you up and made you the head of Israel. Now you've become big in your own eyes. And after he said that, the Lord is not pleased with you. You've done evil. And verse 20 is his reply. But I did obey the Lord. Saul said, I went on the mission the Lord assigned me and I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. He said, destroy all of them. He brought back the leader of them. <laughs> And see, that is one thing. When you do something wrong and the Spirit of God convicts you, repent. Don't try to defend yourself. If you offend someone and, and you are corrected, repent. Don't try to cover up. You know you messed up. You know you've made it And you're trying to justify your wrongdoing. And that is what he's doing here. The soldiers took the sheep and cattle from the plunder and the best of what was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God of Gilgal. But someone replied, that the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the law. To obey is better than to sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of ground. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft or divination. So this is what he's saying. That he says, you think your sacrifice is what God wants. 
So you said, oh, I did it just to bring an offering to God. I bring it. He said that to obey is better than to sacrifice. See, it's not about your sacrifice. It's about the, the heart that the sacrifice comes from. So when David went and slept with another man's wife, the cheater, and he repented, he was repentant in Psalm 51. He says, God, this is what David is saying. God, you do not delight in burnt offerings. See, there were, there were offerings that were known as sin offerings. So when you sin, you go and sacrifice an animal on the altar as for, for, for the forgiveness of your sins. And David knew better. David said, God, I messed up. I messed up this time. I messed up real bad. And God, you do not delight in burnt offerings, else I will bring them. You do not delight in these sacrifices, else I will bring them. But the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. A broken and contrite spirit, God, you will not despise. And when you have accepted the broken and contrite spirit, then I will bring offerings to the altar. So it's not, you cannot pay for forgiveness. So he said to obey is better than to sacrifice. So when you come before the presence of God and your heart is not right, you come here every Sunday and your heart is not right and you give an offering, God doesn't accept it. God doesn't accept it. It's, it's not about you giving an offering. You feel like it doesn't, you're giving. It's not about that. But it's about the posture of your heart. There was a story in the New Testament about, you know, these rich people who were given offerings in the offering bowl. They were given the offerings. And there was this poor widow who had just one coin and she went and kept it in existence. This woman has given more than all these rich people. The disciples were like, how? He said, she gave out of, uh, these people gave out of the abundance of their wealth. She gave everything she had. So it's not about the offering you give, but the place from which it stands. So, it, so it's not that offerings, it's not to obey is better than to sacrifice. And a lot of times, this is it. A lot of times, I, I told you that the, the instruction for the next season is to be obedient to the Spirit of God. And God gives the instructions and we wouldn't obey. And then we don't see the promise coming to pass and then we start fasting. It's not that sacrifice you want. It's your obedience. It's your obedience. I, I was talking to Tito and Shadi and Mutali the other time. They were laughing at me. I was, you know, the Lord had told me, you know, I want you to pray extensively in, in tongues this season. I want you to pray extensively in tongues. And I wasn't doing it as much, but I was fasting. And for some reason, like, I, I do fast a lot, but like, for some reason, this fast was a struggle. It was just, my God. <laughs> like, you, to be honest with you, I actually don't eat breakfast, you know. So I usually, like, start eat around the day, around 12 and all of that. But I wake up in the morning, I'm just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, like, it's a battle, it's a struggle. So I was, I was laying on my bed, I was like, God, please help me. Help me, God, please. This, this one is just to me. God said, I never asked you to fast, I asked you to pray. <laughs> I asked you to pray in tongues extensively, not to fast. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have the, you can't, you don't have to fast, you don't, you don't have to, the discipline. He has given me an instruction for a specific task. I want you to pray in tongues a whole lot. And here, I'm, like, I'm not doing it, but I'm fasting. And it's like, that's not what I asked you to do. I asked you to pray in tongues a whole bunch. And here you are fasting. So it's not about the sacrifice, it's about the obedience. And you can fast all you want. If you're not obedient, you're not going to see the promise come to pass. Amen. So you need to be obedient. When the Spirit of God speaks, you move. Yes, Lord. When God says something, yes, Lord. You don't hesitate. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Amen. So, and now I just wanted to look at these stories. Probably will not be able to go through all of them, but uh, we will see. Let's go to Second Kings chapter four, verse thirty-eight. We wouldn't get through all of them because of time. But maybe I'll pick like one or two. Second Kings chapter four, verse thirty-eight. Are you there? So Elisha has got a bunch of guys he's raising up. It's, it's called the School of the Prophets or the Company of Prophets. Amen. And this is a story that it's you. So this is what Elisha. So Elisha, chapter 38, verse 38. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was famine in that region. While the company of the prophets was meeting with him, he said to his servant, Put on put on put on the large pot and cook some stew for these prophets. One of them went out into the fields to gather hers and found a wild vine and picked as many of his guards as his garments could hold. When he returned, he cut them up into the pots of steel. Though no one knew what they were, the steel was brought out for the men, but as they began to eat, they cried out, Man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. Elisha said, Get some flour, 
he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. So he says to his servants, go get, cook something for the, for the prophets to eat. You understand? They're having a meeting. And they go, and so, you know, they go to get some herbs to come and cook the food. And while they're cooking, you know, there was a famine in the land, so anything goes. They just got everything, right? And they got these gods and came and kept them in the food. But unbeknownst to them, it was poison. So after they had, you know, cooked and everything, you know, these prophets are hungry. They have no discernment. <laughs> The prophet has no discernment. These are prophets. They just went in there. And they were eating the poison. And immediately, you know, they began to have complications. They didn't even taste good. And they shouted to Elijah, Man of God, there is death in the pot. There is death in the pot. What was Elijah's reply? Take some flour. Put it in. They took the flour, put it in the pot, and everything changed. What is it about flour that can take poison away? This is poisonous. It's not even just poison. The prophets, they didn't have discernment. After they had their discernment kicked in, they were like, it's not even poison, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is more than poison, it's dead. And he says, take flour and put it in. And they put it in. And the meal was harmless. And they ate. And nothing happened to them. What is it about flour that is able to take away poison and death? It's not about the flour, it's about the obedience. A lot of times when God asks you to do something, sometimes it sounds really, really stupid and foolish. It's like a guy says, hey, look, I'm blind, heal me. Jesus says, okay, come here. And then he spits, he makes it with mud, and then he throws it at the guy's eye. He says, be healed. What says that, that if we were to do that here? <laughs> If you're all over the news, you, you, you understand that? Yeah. Then the prophet goes to the, the widow of Zerubbabel and says, Hey, there is a famine in the land. So it's not about the flower, it's about the obedience to the instruction. And sometimes God will tell you crazy stuff to see, to test your level of obedience. Because if you can be trusted, God will give you more. Amen. So he who is faithful and little, God will make him rule over much. You know, the, the widow of Zerubbabel. The prophet goes to hell. There is famine in the land already. You, the prophet, you don't have anything to eat. And now you go to the widow, was just a little bit of flour. She's about to make bread, and she and her son will eat and die. Okay, you're not going to eat it for like a week. You're going to eat it and die because of the famine. And the prophet is like, you know what? He goes to see the woman, he's like, get me some water. The woman's like, okay. She's like, look, now while you're going, just make me some bread. And the woman is like, it's just a little bit. It's for my son. You're going to eat and die. The prophet's like, don't worry. Still do it for me. Bring, make everything for me. When you, God will bless you. <laughs> and he says, he says, your barrel is not going to run dry. Right? So couldn't the prophet have said, go to an empty barrel and be like, hey, barrel, produce. And make it. No. And it's a crazy instruction. It's a test of obedience. The widow goes to do that. She makes some for the prophet, everything. And she goes and there is an abundance. It's about the obedience. If that happened today, you see that all about the news, prophet robs widow of last meal. It's like everywhere, all, not even from a false prophet. You see so many people making YouTube videos, commenting about what happened. It was the prophet right in this case? People who know nothing about the spirit begin to judge, you know. Amen. But it's about the obedience. And God wants you to be quick. When God speaks, you just, you're just on the march. When God speaks, you say, yes, Lord. When God speaks, yes, Lord. And that is where the blessing is at. You don't have to do a whole bunch of this season. He said, if you are willing and obedient, you'll be the good of the land. Amen. Let's, let's get through some other story. This story is a really good one, but it's really long. Oh, man. Okay. When you go, go read the story of Nina, okay? Chapter 5. You go read chapter 5. Now, let's go to chapter 6. Chapter 6, are you there? Are you there? So Elijah's with his prophet, the company of prophets, and uh, they meet in a place, but the place is too small. So Elijah's like, you know what, let's build a bigger place. The people are like, let's build a bigger place, okay, so that we can have enough room. So this is what happened. The company of prophets said to Elijah, look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, 
where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elijah replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As, as one of them was cutting down the tree, the iron, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed, when he showed him the place, Elijah cut the stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it up, he said, and the man reached out, out his hand and took it. So those, now it may not be precious now, but an axe head was the, was the deal back then. Amen. That was a new iPhone on the market. Like, <laughs> and you go to borrow and say, hey, can I get your phone just to call my mom? And you come back and tell me, like, it's disappeared. It's not going to sit well, right? Those of you use Android, you wouldn't understand, right? <laughs> And while, you know, they're healing down the trees, the axe head falls into the water. An iron axe head falls into the water. And the guy's like, come down. This belongs to someone. What am I going to do about it? And the prophet's like, uh, just got to say, where did it fall? And he's so calm and chill. And he goes, he said, where did it fall? He's like, he's going to cut the stick. He gets the stick, put this where the axe head fell. The stick goes out, the iron head comes out. Is it taken? What is it about sticks that makes... Metal flutes. <laughs> uh, what is it about sticks that makes iron float? Right? We would have gone to the place in the sea where all the treasures have sunk and just put the sticks there and the gold coins will be coming out. It's not about that. It's about the instruction. But look at the pattern in these stories. Every instruction is always seems foolish. There is an iron in the water and he asked me to put a stick there. How is that going to solve the problem? There is poison in the food. He asked me to put in flour. How is that going to solve the problem? And what the, the, the point I'm trying to get to you is that most of the things that God is going to require of you in this season of obedience wouldn't make sense. But all you have to do is obey, and you will see that iron head close up. All you have to do is be obedient. Well, God said it, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't need to make sense. Just go for it. <coughs> if God has promised something, He's going to do it. If God says, if you put a stick in it, the iron head is going to flow. Number 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he promised, and will he not make it good? God cannot lie. Amen. So when God makes a promise, it is so. Whatever God says, it is so. Amen. So when God speaks, everything responds to the word of God. So it's, God is going to test your obedience, and God is going to give you ridiculous instructions. That if, if you have even told me what is instruction that God gave you, are you sure it's God? <laughs> but you have to walk in faith like we studied yesterday and be obedient to the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Most of the things God will say sometimes wouldn't make any sense. But step out in faith and be obedient. And, and sometimes if obedience were easy, if like it made sense, everyone would do it. But God wants to test how much you trust Him. Are you willing to look like a fool for me? Let me see if I can get one more story. Let me just narrate that. So, there is, there is a famine in the land, and in the land of Samaria, and the king is walking on the walls of the city, and there is a famine, and people are you know, in trouble, and people are you know, dying, and all of that. And one woman, so as the king is walking on the walls of the city, he sees two women fighting. And the one woman calls to him, King, help us! Help me here! And the king is like, what's up? What's going on? And he's like, what? Even when, when, you should have, when you read the story, you see how depressed the king was. When she said the king should help them, the king didn't even listen to what the problem was. like, how can I help you in this situation? He didn't even know what it was. He began to complain. As I finished complaining, he's like, what's the problem? <laughs> it's all in there. He, that was how depressed it was. And he was like, well, it, it, it was so bad, the hunger, the famine was so bad that this woman asked me to cook my, my son, to kill my son, we would eat him. And when the meat is done, we're going to do that to her son. And this was real, this is a real event. And even not so long, not even in biblical times, it used to happen. Like some few hundred years ago, when the famine was real severe. So they, they cook their son, they kill their son, cook their son, and eat him because of the famine. Now, 
The service meet is done. They, <laughs> they go to the other woman, let's kill the son, but she has killed her son. She says, ah, uh, not my son. <laughs> not my son. So they talk like blah. Yeah. So the prophet said, so the king says, this is terrible. So immediately the king heard that the king got so sad and he tore his garment. And the biblical times, to tear one's garment would be a sign of anger or, or repentance, a lot of things involved. So he or anguish, so he tore his garments. And he said, if I get Elisha, I'm going to kill that guy. Elisha has done nothing. He believes God has done this to them, and Elisha is God's prophet. So if I get Elisha, I'm going to kill him. So he sends a, a servant to go to Elisha and say that you, you are the cause of all this. But as the guy is going, he hasn't got there. Elisha is sitting in his house with some of the guys, some of his sons, the prophet. And Elijah is sitting there. And he said, look, this murderer is trying to get me. The sons are like, which murderer? He says, the king has sent some, some, one of his guys to come here and accuse me of what is going on. But I even hear his master's footsteps behind him. He's trying to get me. Elijah didn't finish speaking to the servant, opened the door and came in and said, hey, the king said you are. And he said, let me tell you something. Tomorrow by this time, there will be so much food in Israel that you guys wouldn't know what to do with yourself. It's not even going to be funny how, many, how much food is going to be here. There's going to be food all over the place. And one of the guys who came along with them, the king's right hand man said, look, even if God were to open the floodgates of heaven, would this be so? And Matthew said, look, because of what you said, you're going to see it, but you're not going to taste of it. You're not going to partake of it. I am God's prophet and I'm telling you, and, and, and you are doubting what I'm saying. You will not partake of it. So, what was the prophet's reward? Abundance. He didn't honor the prophet. He didn't partake of it. So, what happened? So, the next day, there are these four lepers who are outside the city walls. And lepers were considered unclean, or people who have skin diseases. Okay, so they were considered unclean. And so they were outside of the city uh, because of their uncleanness and couldn't come in. So, they were, they were like, look, we're starving here. We're going to die anyways. So, what we're going to do is. Let's, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go inside, they're going to kill us anyway. Now, let's go to the, uh, uh, the Armenians or Armenians. Yeah, let's go, let's go there. Let's go to the enemy camp. And when we get to the enemy camp, uh, they have a lot of food there. But the reason why they didn't have food was because the enemy had surrounded them. They didn't allow the people to go out or come in. But they had a whole bunch of food. Because they wanted Israelites to starve to death. When they get, they go kill them. So the four lepers were like, let's get, look, we're going to die anyway. So if we say here, we're going to die. If we go and the enemies give us food, fine. If they don't give us food, they're going to kill us anyway. They're going to die. We have nothing to lose. So while they were going, the Bible said that the Spirit of God caused the movement of these four sickly people to be like the sound of chariots and horses and armies that were coming. And when the enemies, when they come, they heard, they're like, look, behold, the Israelites are going to call upon the Egyptians and the Samaritans and all other people to come and fight them. And they run and left everything. <laughs> So they run and left everything. What was that sound of the chariots and the horses? It was a word that the prophet spoke. So when the prophet spoke, the word went into the future. And it went into the next day and it manifested. So as these guys were going, the prophetic word, the words that proceeded out of the prophet's mouth began to manifest as sounds of chariots and horses. And the enemy ran away. And these guys went and they went into one tent and there was food. They ate everything, took some gold and silver, went and hid it. They came back again, came and ate some food, <laughs> took some gold and silver, and went and The people in Israel don't like it because they think we are sick. We've also got our good stuff. So they were just getting one of them was like, no, what are you doing is not good. <laughs> let's, go, let's go tell these people and they came. So they went outside, they were standing outside the city gate because they were not allowed in because of their condition. And they shouted to one of the keepers, look, there is an abundance of food here. Okay, so, so they finally sent the, the king to the message to the king. The king said, look at what these people are trying to do. It's all in the Bible. The king said, look at what these people are trying to do. They think they are smart. They are trying to deceive us to, to make the place look empty and desolate. And they are hiding. So when we come, they will attack us. So one of his commanders says, there are still about four men to go. They've got nothing to lose either. They're going to die of salvation. So if they go and the enemy kill them, fine. Yeah. So they send four men to go. And these four men go to get... But the four men went there on horses, and there was no one there. The God who came back, and the whole city, they just came and the king sent men, and they came and gathered the food. And when they were going, they saw that the enemy had run, some of them had left their clothes on the wayside, they were scared. And they gathered all the food. Now, this right hand man who had seen, who went, to, who went along with the guy to the prophet, who said, even if God were to open the flag gates of heaven, would this be so? He was in charge of the food. And the people were so hungry that when he opened the gate, they came and trampled over him. And he died. 
So he was the one in charge of the food, but he didn't even get to taste of it. What is that? Obedience. You obey the word of the Lord when he speaks. You guys play some music. Okay. So be on your feet. So you 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 when God speaks, baby, amen. God is gonna reply to you this season. This season, 2019, this season we are going to is full of a whole bunch of blessings. A lot of good stuff are in the year. A lot of great stuff. But the key, see, it's like this building. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. But the key that unlocks all the gates is obedience. And whatever instruction that God gives you in this season, be very sure to listen to what God is saying. It doesn't matter how crazy it is. How do I put flower in, in pointing things and it gets better? God is going to give you some instructions and it's going to seem crazy. It's going to seem crazy. But I promise you, when you obedience to God in this season, if you're obedient to God in this season, you're going to see tremendous manifestation. So I'm, 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 I'm admonishing you, this is going to be a crazy year. Good kind of crazy. We're going to see the blessings of God overtake us. We're going to see strange things of God. We're going to see the other side of God. We're going to see powerful things. But make sure that in this season, you are obedient to what the Spirit of God is saying. When God says move two steps, you take two steps. It doesn't make, if it doesn't make sense, you see, sometimes we are so stuck up in the presence of God. You feel the presence of God. You want to go on your knees and worship, but you look around. Who are people who see me? Who cares? You are not desperate. You don't know how much the devil wants to destroy you. All you have to do sometimes is just lift your hands to the heavens in worship and the heavens will open over you. Your breakthrough. But so sometimes we are so sophisticated. We cannot, we cannot even lift our hands to worship God. You cannot go on your knees. And sometimes the key, the key to your breakthrough is just going on your knees and saying, Father, I worship you. But you come in and you feel so big to do it. And that's probably why you'll still be in the same place that you are in. So you're going to 2019, it's an amazing season. But if you don't change the way that you respond and react to things, 2019 is not going to be any different from the past years. It's a great year and there are a lot of things in store. 2018 has been amazing, but there is a lot more stuff in 2019. But you have to be attentive to the cry of God and respond and be obedient. And I promise you, when you're obedient, you're going to see great things happen. Now, we've got like you know, some 30 40 minutes. I'm going to pray for some of you. Can we take this thing out of here to the back? And just down a little bit. Now, I'm going to lay hands on a whole bunch of you, as many as I possibly can. And uh, I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to pray with you. And I'm probably going to speak a word into some of you in your lives. But what is going to happen? It's going to empower you for the next season. There are some of you in here. You might be dealing with stuff, but I promise you, when I lay hands on you today, the Spirit of God, the power of God is going to hit you in your spirit. But feel that in Luke chapter 4 verse 8, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to set the captives free, to bind the broken heaven, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. And he said, this day, this last day of 2018, this word is fulfilled in your ears. And I'm going to pray for you. And I look, it doesn't matter, some of you, when I lay hands on you and I pray for you, there are gifts and abilities, not just spiritual gifts and abilities, but even natural talents that have been dormant on the inside of you. When I lay hands on you and pray for you, there is going to be an activation. You are going to be, when I lay hands on you, it's going to give you power. I think I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it because of time. I'm not going to do like a whole lot of prayer. I'm just going to lay hands on you. And when I lay hands on you, it's, it's just, it is so. You don't need a whole lot. Some of them Jesus just spots in your eye. But I'm just going to lay hands on you and then you keep on moving. And as I lay hands on you, the power of God is going to hit you in your spirit. My God. Some of you, it doesn't matter what, some of you listen. As a believer, you don't have a demon on the inside of you. But you may have some form of oppression. And tonight, the presence of God is here. The power of God is here to set people free. And when I lay hands on you, it doesn't matter. Let them lift your expectations as you can. We stand about faith yesterday. And when you come forward, all I'm going to do is lay hands on you. 
come up, you look at the blood flow is going to hit your spirit. You come up with such free. You come up with the liver. Whatever it is, you've been struggling up. Some of you are going to have breakthroughs. You've been expecting something. You've been waiting for something. The spirit of God is just going to hit you just like that. And whatever it is you're expecting from God, come in faith and I lay hands on you. And it's so in Jesus' name. If, if you are expecting something from God, quickly come forward. If you need a breakthrough, you need a healing, you need a manifestation, I'm just going to lay hands on you, touch you, and we're going to see the power of God man.
exalted. The enemies defeated. And we have the victory.